My name is Nassim Sabs. Let me ask you a question. Has anything ever happened to you that you couldn't explain? That made you feel sort of foolish when you tried to tell somebody about it? Well, if it has, you have plenty of company, as you'll soon see. Tops the news tonight as family and friends gathered to remember Allison. Reporter Pilar Pedraza was there and shows us how the goodbye honored Allison's personality and life. Keith, you may notice I'm wearing black tonight. I thought I was going to a funeral, but it turned out I'd missed a memo asking us to dress in bright colors to honor Allison. You may notice I'm wearing black tonight. I thought I was going to a funeral, but it turned out I'd missed a memo asking us to dress in bright colors to honor Allison. Allison's family says they may be saying goodbye to her, but they won't forget. Her father especially plans to continue his newly started fight for more gun control. Keith? Pilar Pedraza from our sister station, KWICH in Wichita, Kansas. Thanks for being here. Allison's family says they may be saying goodbye to her, but they won't forget. Her father especially plans to continue his newly started fight for more gun control. I'm different. I'm... your worst nightmare. I'm the one that is that image that keeps you awake at night. I'm the one that turns your nightmares into reality. I'm the one who does you harm. I'm no human, I tell you. I mean... What if you were just like me? What if you're actually dead and you just didn't know it? What if everyone around you is imaginary? I just want to see you all suffer. I want you all to feel the pain. You all think I'm joking? You do, don't you? It's not a joke, I'll promise you that. I'm the one who lives inside your home. I'm the unexplained creaks and popping noises. I'm the one who makes everything bad to you happen. You humans, I'm different. I'm your worst nightmare. I'm the one that is that image that keeps you awake at night. I'm the one that turns your nightmares into reality. I'm the one who does you harm. I'm no human, I tell you. I mean, what if you were just like me? What if you're actually dead and you just didn't know it? What if everyone around you is imaginary? I just want to see you all suffer. I want you all to feel the pain. I think it's good. 
Cody. We looked at the image that Genesis 3 talks about. It says the image was more crafty than any sustenance of the country which Yehovah made. And the Isha, which is a hybrid being that is part human, began using this shaft that made its appearance blossom and made it become beautiful. And it also gave this shaft to the humans that were with it and they used it as well and this image deceived and destroyed it says just like it says here in Revelation 13 so again we talk about all of this in part one so if you want to know more about this you need to go watch part one but um Again, in Revelation 13, it says the lamb who speaks like a dragon deceives the people of earth by the means of those miracles, which he had the power to do. And it says he had the power to give life under the image of the beast. So that's how he deceived, by giving life under the image of the beast. And will mingle themselves with the seed of humans, but they shall not cleave to one another. So... The beast is a group of non-humans, obviously, since the human seed won't cleave to them. So obviously they're, they're not human. Um, so the beast right here with seven heads and ten horns is non-humans ruling the world. And the dragon gives them their power right here in verse 4. And... The dragon is also known as that old serpent right here. So the dragon gives them their power, and the dragon is that old serpent, number 3789, which originates from the idea of sharpness of vision and stems from the word 3700 which means to appear so Revelation 12 is telling us that the serpent otherwise known as the dragon or Satan is the sharpness of vision that deceives the whole world just like it says in Genesis 3 the image deceived and 398 wasted or destroyed this knight's temple 
we've been there before, but I want to show you something else. Remember last time I showed you the double-headed eagle, but I'm now going to point your attention to the floor. Oops, what is that? That's an eight-pointed star. Now, who does the star represent? Well, there's the star of Islam. Isn't that interesting? The two are identical. There's the star of Islam in various forms. So we find the star in Islam, we find it in the Catholic cathedrals, we find it especially dedicated to Mary, and we find it in the Islamic world. Now, how does the star come into existence? It's simply a square within a square, and there you have it. If you want to have the star of David, you just take the triangle within the triangle, and you have it. There you go. It's a sex symbol. It's occult. It's very occult. The shrine, the ancient Arabic order, nobles of the mystic shrine, the shrine is the show army of masonry. Maintains a very high profile, it is necessary to be a 32nd degree mason for six months before being eligible to join the shrine. Only the highest Freemasons may join the shrine. Now these are most of the prominent Americans, by the way. All the big prominent Americans march through New York as the Shriners in their masquerades. Now, the Shrine is in the name of Allah. Did you know that? So here the Christians, of so-called Christians of the 32nd degree, who now know already that they worship Lucifer, come to the Shrine with a Koran on the altar. Now the Bible's gone. When you reach the highest level of Freemasonry and you become a Shriner, the Bible's gone. We sealed our solemn oath in the name of Allah, the God of the Arab, the Muslim, the Mohammedan, the God of our fathers. Wow, is Allah the God of our fathers? Here's the oath. In willful violation whereof I incur the fearful penalty of having my eyeballs pierced to the center with three-edged blade, my feet flayed, and I be forced to walk the hot sands upon the sterile shores of the Red Sea until the flaming sun shall strike me with a livid plague, and may Allah, the God of Arab, Muslim, and Mohammedan, the God of our fathers, support me to the entire fulfillment of the same. Can a Christian make such an oath? Yes or no? Obviously not. So masonry is nothing other than the ancient mystery religion, and Jesuits are the ancient mystery religion, and Islam is the ancient mystery religion behind the scenes, and who do you think controls it all? Rome. Rome controls it all. So how would you like it if I said that I believe that Islam and Catholicism behind the scenes is one and the same thing? Have you noticed that Catholicism never complains about Islam not allowing evangelism? Because it suits their purpose. It's already Catholicism. But when evangelism is done in non-Islamic countries and it draws Catholics away, whoo, then you have huge drama. Isn't that interesting? Those are double standards which are hard to understand unless you look behind the scenes, where you have all these Egyptian rooms and the Syrian rooms. And here is a Masonic Lodge, the Freemason Lodge meeting in Cairo, President Gamal Abal Nasser, President Nasser, 1954 to 17, Anwar Sadat, 1970 to 1981, they were all members of the AEO, the Ancient Egyptian Order, and of the ANOMS, the Order and the Arabic Nobles of the Mystic Shrine. So, isn't it interesting that they're all working together behind the scenes? This is all a joke. Here is Judge Racheb Idris, ex-governor, Grand Master of the Sovereign Grand Commander of Egypt. There is the Fez as their symbol. This is... Uh, a mason himself who showed me in Lebanon that most of the high Muslims were all masons. He himself was a high mason. Anyway, masonry. Let's go to this Masonic temple in Oklahoma. And what do we see? Aha! We see affairs. And we see Arabic symbols. And we see affairs, 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 affairs. And of course, Mosla, Muslim Allah. So Freemasonry at the highest level worships Allah, who actually directly is set.